I didn't grow up as a farmer. The farming is a second career for me. And the first year that I started out farming completely on my own, owning my own operation, I went through four major emotional financial uh, life decisions, four of the big keystones in somebody's life, milestones in somebody's life. Uh, I went through it in one year with my wife, Kate. It was insane. And let's just, I'm gonna go through all four right now. This video is gonna be a lot shorter than last week's video. Let's, we're gonna jump right into it. Before we begin, if you want to see all of the content that goes with the Fix My Farm series, type in your internet browser, F-I-X-M-Y dot F-A-R-M. That is the URL that will take you to the hub page for all of this content. It's organized all the posts that I've done already, all the posts that I have planned for the future, and any bonus content is going to be on that page. Now, let's get back to the show. So those four major milestones uh, affect me emotionally, financially, other, all the other LEs uh, that there is. I had a baby, Kate was pregnant, and we had our daughter Mabel. Um, we bought a car, which is a major financial decision and one that I uh, wish I had done a little bit differently. We started a business. That was the first time I had been farming. Myself started a business. I was, I was, I was the head cheese. I was the CEO, the founder, whatever fancy title you want to say. Uh, I was the only guy running the company. And at the same time, we moved not only once but twice. And if any of you have moved before, which most people have moved somewhere somehow. You can know you know that it can be very stressful. It's something that eats up a lot of time, energy, and resources. And oh my goodness! So let's jump through these one by one. Uh, on the quicker side, if you want more details, I do a corresponding blog post every week to go with these videos that has more information, more pictures, because no one wants to watch a 45-minute video of me talking as a talking head. But if you want the story, if you have some time at home later, uh, you want to do some reading, you want to see some of the corresponding photographs of this stuff. All of that can be found on the blog on Farm Marketing Solutions. So the first things first, and the most important, and the most amazing, and the most life-changing was having a kid. Farming with a kid, having a kid. Uh, Kate got pregnant in the fall of 2012. We had our daughter Mabel on in July of 2013. She's now over four years old, and uh, yeah, come, July is a completely convenient time to have a baby. Uh, the day she was delivered, I got a ton of feed. I think it was two tons of feed uh, delivered, and I had to have somebody else receive that. And I didn't have a great system in line, and I'm like in the delivery room being like, yeah, you know, the truck's coming, it's on its way. Can you please make sure that there's someone there? Yeah, ugh. and then like trying to go back, being the only person who is the full-time farmer, uh, going back to the farm while wanting to be at home on paternity leave and um, spend time with Kate and Mabel, that was just insane. Uh, not highly recommended, but that was, uh, that was the story. And that was a good motivational driver for me, is that I wasn't just Kate and I anymore, and it, we couldn't just like, scrape by or figure things out or sleep on couches. We really had to have some kind of solid plan because now I have the responsibility of a whole nother life, a whole nother human being. And it's not just my kid, it's a person. Mabel is now a person. She's very much, very opinionated person. And uh, I had to get my act together uh, in a manner of speaking so that I could properly support her and Kate and myself and our new growing family. So that was a huge major milestone. Uh, one that of which constantly evolves through the years and anybody who has kids or is farming with kids can is nodding their head like, yeah, man, it's a whole different ball game being an entrepreneur and then being an entrepreneur with a child. Uh, and that's how I wrote my first book. That's how I got things started. That's why I was so motivated. I had to make things work for my family. So the second thing, I'm gonna skip around a little bit here. Uh, second major thing was starting my farm. Uh, I knew that I wanted to start a farm and I had this idea via the internet of what it was like to be an entrepreneur. I was so unprepared. I was like kind of prepared, but I, I I needed help and uh, it was it was quite difficult and I was super stressed, super happy, super enthusiastic, didn't know what the heck I was doing. I kind of knew what I was doing financially and I had started putting information out in the world. I, I started the YouTube channel then. It goes back four years now, four or five years, four years, I don't know the math. And uh, starting a farm was no small task. I'm not going to go into huge lengths about what it is to start a farm and how to start a farm uh, because that's what this entire 
kind of network channel is about, is about farming. Uh, so you kind of get that point. But for me, starting the farm that year, I felt a little unprepared. Um, of course, there are things that I would do differently if I could. Hindsight's always 20-20. Um, maybe take a little bit more time, maybe spend more time apprenticing, get more experience in business. I had some money saved, so that was good. Uh, I started small, but I didn't start small with a day job and a farm and kind of work into it. I jumped in with both feet and that was nuts that was stressful so my farm started i raised 1300 broilers and i was growing herbs and i had a veggie or i had a, a chicken and herb csa where people get a chicken a week for 20 weeks and they would get a bundle of herbs to go with it and then i sold herbs or vegetables or other things i could grow or pawn off uh in addition to that it was not a scale of which that i would be able to support myself my gross profit looked good. It looked like I could support myself, but the net, I just didn't know the net yet. Now, years later, I know what the net is, and I was way off from being able to cover all of my bills with what I was gonna gross with production-wise on farm. That's why I created pastured poultry packet is because I've now figured out the net and this helps you figure out the net so you don't make the same mistake. I got through the season, I updated my numbers after a few batches of chickens, I was taking notes and doing my finances and saying, I'm, I'm not gonna make it through the rest of this, you know, till next year because I'm not making enough money to cover all my costs and it's taking longer and everything is, you know, more expensive, takes longer, goes wrong, fails, there's the learning curve, all of those things, it, it's very difficult. And uh, I knew that I needed a job uh, or some other source of income and that's what I went in search of and that's why I created the stress-free chicken tractor plans. I started selling my book because I got some internet traction on that. That helped support my family as we transitioned into uh, Camps Road Farm where I became employed at Camps Road uh, to manage the operations that we had here uh, and then eventually take over as the farm manager uh, as time went on. So yeah, jumping in the farm, both feet, uh, unexperienced, not highly recommended. So the next one, moving twice. So the first move was in December, January. Uh, we were essentially homeless. Uh, we lived on bicycles for about a year. We were apprenticing all over the place. We had just finished up a season apprenticing on a farm and we needed a place to live. We moved to Western Connecticut for several different reasons. Kate was pregnant and it was a good halfway point between my mom and her mom. Uh, so they come visit and help out. We had family in Western Connecticut, uh, aside from moms, uh, that uh, would be around to help us out. We knew the area and there was also open farmland and it was a good area demographically for making money, selling high dollar, high value pastured poultry to customers who would be able to pay $6 a pound, which was the asking price that I had come up with for my chickens. So all of these things went into effect. I started taking trips to Western Connecticut, seeking out farmland, and we ended up with a rental through Kate's cousin, uh, had a one bedroom in the back of their house. So we rented from family, uh, found some farmland, and started and moved to Western Connecticut uh, in the winter of 2013 it, on a hope and a prayer. And then at the end of the year, we knew that I had gotten employed at Camps Road Farm. It would have been better if I was on site the entire time. Uh, being on farm and being the farmer uh, is kind of beneficial. So we moved on the farm at the end of the year. So we had to move in January and then we moved again in like the beginning of December and that both times had to pack up what we had in life. And that the second time with a child and move to an entirely new place on a new career with our new car. And let's talk about the car real quick. That's the last thing I wanna bring up in this video. So when I was searching for a car, I wanted something that had some kind of towing capacity, which would be good for the farm. I had, it was got a little landscape trailer and it had to pull at least you know a ton of feed plus the weight of the trailer. Um, so I got an SUV that would tow up to 4,500 pounds, 4,500 pounds, that's two and a half tons, uh, two and a quarter tons. Uh, and I wanted something that was big enough to fit stuff in it to pack up for the farmer's market, uh, but also that was safe reliable and good for my family. So I ended up with a Honda Pilot. The Honda Pilot gave me the big closed in cab that I could put stuff in, I could put a baby in, I could put a family in, I could put farmer's market stuff in and pack this thing to the gills, which I have done repeatedly over the years. Uh, but also with the towing capacity and the all wheel drive and the height uh, to get me off the ground. A pickup truck would have been all right and I, I I looked up pickup trucks, but at the end of the day, I wanted something with a closed cab that I could fit a baby in, uh, and just the extended cab pickup trucks were super pricey. I bought a used Honda Pilot. Uh, I forget exactly how much I paid for it, but it came with around 80,000 miles on it. Uh, four years later, with about two and a half years left on my 
uh, loan. I took a loan out on it. Uh, I have $6,000 left to pay off and I have $170,000 left on this vehicle that guzzles gas and I don't need it for the farm anymore. And I could do something smart like sell it or trade it or do something, but I'm scared of that financial move right now because I don't have a buffer. Uh, so for now, we're gonna run the thing into the ground. I've been regular on the maintenance with it, uh, so it runs great. I've had, knock on wood, no major problems, but I'm a little scared that it's about $6,000 owed with $170,000 left on this piece of machinery. As I go through my personal budget, which we're gonna cover on Farm Marketing Solutions, we're gonna talk about how to pay down loans a little bit quicker, uh, savings and all these things. We have student loans, we have our car loan, and other than that, we have no debt. Uh, I am debt free, we have Kate's student loans, and we're, you know, we're figuring it all out. So my car, which is a major financial thing, I took out a loan, I put some money down uh, from my savings. It got me through that first year, and it has been very beneficial through the last couple of years. I love my, my little. Uh, I love the Honda Pilot, but the gas guzzler. It's huge. If I could have something more fuel efficient, I totally would. Uh, but I just don't have the time, energy, or capital right now uh, to to switch things out. So those are my four major life moves uh, all in one year while trying to start a farm. Had a baby, started a business, moved twice, and bought a car. All major milestones. Kind of nuts. Not recommended. So if you want to read more, see more pictures, see kind of like a little bit more of my past, you can go to farmmarketingsolutions.com forward slash blog or go to fixmy.farm. That's fixmyfarm, you know, just kind of spelled out as a URL, fixmy.farm, dot farm instead of dot com. I'm gonna be pushing that because it's an easy way to get where you need to go. And that's the hub page for all of these stories, all of these videos, and all of the stuff that I have going forward, along with the schedule for what videos are gonna come out when, what I'm gonna cover, what topics, and it's a place for you to leave feedback for me. Uh, if you like it, if you don't like it, if there's something that you see is not gonna be covered, I'm doing this as much to help myself as I am to help you. Uh, I'm struggling with some stuff on my farm right now, which I explain on that webpage, and I wanna figure it out. Um, because I want to be here, I want to raise chickens and chicken tractors, and I, I, I want to I want to live the life of a farmer, continue to do it. But I have a very complicated uh, situation here that I'm trying to solve. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. I hope you are enjoying the series so far. I know it's a lot of talking head, but there's some very important backstory before we get into the real meat of how I'm going to fix my farm. Again, I love you. Thanks for stopping in. Until next time, I'll see you out in the field.